you hardcore boxing fans out there, how you doing? It's Russ here from Porky's Corner. Still the voice of hardcore boxing. Is like that better? It's not bad that is it. See if I can get through Sunday today we are. We are getting steaming. I'm shoving out up my nose. <coughs> I'm just on my way up to a meeting on a Sunday. A meeting, unbelievable, isn't it? No rest for the wicked, is there? <coughs> my eight driver had me not. <coughs> so, what's been happening in the sport of boxing? Well, I woke up this morning. Twenty past ten. Went to bed at two, I got up at six, I have a four hours kip. Woke up this morning to hear all this about wild boar. What's all that about? Wild boar? Hey? Okay. Still going on about Tyson's wild boar carry on and they're saying that somebody's had a 25 gram bum. Well, don't believe any of it. It's all designed to sell fight. They've got to have an angle. Like I said, Ben Davidson's name were getting thrown around to see if he'd train Wilder. They've got to have an angle to sell this third fight. I don't know what it is, but the Wild Boar one's a bit boring now, isn't it? I think so. I'd like to see him just say, look, I got the fight wrong, I came in heavy, and I'll come in and I'll come in at a different weight next time. That's all Wilder's got to say, hasn't it? mind all that throwing George Foreman's name about and all that, what's he going to do? What's George Foreman done? What's George Foreman done with his sons that are boxers? They haven't achieved anything, have they? You know, Tyson Fury, what are you going to teach him at the moment? What's Andy Lee and that other guy going to teach him? It's already schooled Vladimir, hasn't it? People are saying he's schooled Wild at first time, so what can anybody teach him now? 32 year old in the next few months. I'm not gonna teach him anything, are they? You're not gonna be you're not gonna be able to teach him anything. You just want somebody there to just make sure that he's alright, don't they? Make sure he's motivated, that's all he needs. If you can learn 5% off them, brilliant, but People keep saying Andy Lee's next big, big thing as a trainer. Well, what has Andy Lee done with anybody from debut? What has he done with anybody who's got a few losses? See, the thing is with world champions, former world champions, they don't, they're not prepared to put the time in, are they, with kids? They don't want to go learn the craft. You've got to go learn your craft. You're looking at Mosh. You're walking at middle of the road. So all this, you see that's when I have a problem, because I smell it, the bull, miles away, Andy Lee, Sugar Hill, they just jumped in aren't they with Tyson Fury, he's a ready made guy fighting for millions, high profile, Ben Davison done the same thing, what's Ben Davison done for Isaac Lowe, and what's he done, he won out yeah? Judging when he's done something with Isaac Lowe, but he'd already had loads of wins before. Let's see him nurture somebody like Chris Smedley's done, like Mick Wales done from age of 10. Or just some turning pro. They mind all this, well, I'm a world champion, I've got an high profile. I'm in with them on IFL. I should be. Uh... Ho ho ho! Well, that. that... I'm just going to reverse up here. Binned it. I thought he'd bin that uh, Nissan GTI. It looks like he's just parked up at Verge. I was I was just about to say unlucky because I don't like him. Blow me off that M18 one day. They're mega fast, aren't they? Them GTRs. Just about to say unlucky. 
as a weapon. We're getting back to uh, getting back to the training situation. Oh, let's see somebody do some out with somebody from debut. Let's see people learn the crafts. I'm jumping in with fighters that are already made. You know what I mean? Let's see him get a good win. But that's just my opinion and I'm not entitled to it. But this wild boar thing, it's boring. This glove tampering thing, I don't know what to make of that now. I don't know, I, I just tend to think the opposite. I'm one of them guys on YouTube who just... I read things on YouTube and I think, what a load of old tosh. I don't believe stuff. I don't believe it. I don't believe it one bit. The nonsense that they're spouting. It's just lies, lies and more lies. It's like the frotch carry on, isn't it? We, uh, no, we'll come to that in a bit. The Chevez frotch. I'm going to bring that one up. There's nobody dare say out there they about it. People don't want to speak because they've got the noses in the trough. But I can assure you, once people are out of favour, they were coming running to me. I've knocked people back already coming on the channel. No, you didn't want to come on other months. No, just because you've fallen out with somebody, you want to come on. Get gone! That's what I say, get gone. People don't even want to, they don't even ring me. And ask because they know what the answer will be. I've got too much about myself. What's happening with Spencer Fearing anyway? I've been training this morning, he's gone quiet, hasn't he? Spencer, pick up the phone. Only £11 to go Spencer now, so I've kept my wet part of bargain. Pick up the phone, all right? Or, next time you're in Sheffield, just make your way to Den's gym, or come over. Or if you feel safer, Spencer, go to Dominic's gym. Go to Dominic Ingalls gym, right, if you feel safe, but not that he can fight anyway, because he can't fight. Can lift weights though. This here 122, it's 114 everywhere else. Should do this every time, shouldn't I really? That one on. Two dear. Full tank anyway, love. Look no. at these here. Got more money than cents, haven't you? Aren't they? This is why we come here in the morning. We get four Costa Large, 16 quid. But we've got a kettle in house, but we just want to be trendy. Boil your kettle, love, like I do. All right, boil your kettle and grow up. Save your money. Look after the penny. The pennies will look after you. That's the way I look at it. It's like Den. Den will give anybody money. Even tramp St Street or give him a tenner and buy him a burger. But it goes Chinese and it's £25.10 and then saying, well it's 25 quid isn't it? Hey? <laughs> <laughs> eh? I don't know, what's it all about? What is it all about? Right, let's get this done now on the way. Right. Here we go.
The reasons I don't like Eddie Hearn. These are the Eddie Hearn's Dirty Dozen. We call this Eddie Hearn's Dirty Dozen because the simple reason it's 12, 12 of these crimes against the sport of boxing. Right, I'm going to point them out to you now. One. Hang on, let me get on the motorway. I'll get it in cruise control. I'm going to Derbyshire today. Right, number one. Talks like he's an Essex gangster. This is a crime against boxing. Eddie Hearn talks like he's an Essex gangster. That he's from the streets of Bethnal Green or Basildon. When he's not, he's from Great Worley. And he lives in a big mansion at Ingotston. So in stock. So he's not from the streets. Eddie, you are not from the streets. From the rich part of Essex. You were brought up in a castle in Great Worley. You went to private school. Come on then, mate, get in your lane. So that's number one done. Number two. I've got enough speed cameras on there, is that? I've had enough speed cameras to last me a lifetime, last for a week. Number two. I've met Eddie Hearn and he's an arrogant tosser and a knob. He's not from the streets, he's surrounded by security at press conferences. So I don't like to hear all this crap about I love a pound note or let's plot up, we'll be caked in six months. Apples and pears and go on my son and all that. It's all a load of rubbish. He's never suffered hardship in his life. Never suffered hardship in his life. If he's from the streets, why does security escort into his car when it comes to Sheffield? Hey, eh? it's all nonsense, isn't that right, Eddie? Number three, the Patrick Day incident when he was crying his eyes out. That did it for me. Just like the Scott Westgarth incident, where they're all going to do wonders, they're going to do this and they're going to do that, and they're going to make the sport safer. Yet Dillian White. And Povetkin have failed five dope tests, but they're going to make the sport safer, promoting dope heads. But every single one of them, they've, they've uh, got not guilty on, haven't they? Nobody ever admits a dope test. Number four, the EIS situation. I'm not messing about here. Let's get it fastly. Fucking hell's best. The EIS situation and the monopoly of YouTube. The monopoly of YouTube, lad. The monopoly of YouTube, lads, who, without Hearn, would be on Dole. So that's a good thing, but it's how it's done. The EIS is lottery funded. Let me just say that again. The EIS is lottery funded how many champions from debut have match you mad that are not from the EIS and that are born in England the answer is zero yeah they've had one here behind he's Nigerian the answer is zero zero all right zero patrol Number five, the Dave Allen situation. We him being thrown under a bus and then getting into his head with Darren Barker, the worst ever trainer in the world. The man who throws towels for fun. They're going Dave Allen's head, didn't they? Dave Allen's offered 250 grand by old fish eyes. What's he going to do? He asks for 350. He's just fought Price for 200. If he beats Price, he gets 400 to fight Povetkin. He didn't beat him. But he gets two, He gets offered 250 to fight Dubois and he says no. I don't get that. So that, he, then, he then turns around and starts again and fights for 12 grand at Sheffield. Ask Barker to train him, what's he do? 
He tells him to retire. But yet, Darren Barker, we're going to train him for 350 grand, won't you, Darren Barker? Shit house. Shit house. Essex shit house. They put Dave Allen in, right? Let, let's have a look at it like this, right? Barker wanted his 10%, didn't he? So, fair enough. We, we, we understand that, don't we? Look at him here accelerating on inside lane. I was going to do that. <laughs> No, Barker. Wait a minute, let's get into the lane here. I don't, I don't want to fucking mess up here. Dan and Barker, right? Nobody's saying he weren't a good fighter. You know what I mean? He showed his loyalties to Mick Hennessy, didn't he? Mick Hennessy invested in him, gave him a signing on fee. British Commonwealth European title. What's he going to do? He jumped ship, didn't he? Now Dave Allen made a big mistake, didn't he, when he was running around saying I want to be loyal to Matchroom, I want to be loyal to Matchroom. Why should Dave Allen be loyal to Matchroom? Why? Were they loyal to him when they threw him under a bus with Ortiz and advised him to fight Yoka? Hey, eh? What's all that about? I want to be loyal to Matchroom, my name's David Allen and I'm loyal to Eddie. What he really meant was I didn't go on a Frank Warren show without getting Eddie's advice. And Eddie's advice was well, ask for another hundred grand. Because he's a hern, isn't he? Hern with hern. Now, Dave Allen were 9 and 0. Dave Allen's undefeated in 10 fights. Why did they put him in with Otis? Because it obviously ruined him. After that, he just wanted to be known as Dave Allen the punch bag. But when he were with, when he were with Dennis Hobson, Seven fights undefeated. Yeah, fair enough, Dennis got rid of him because he didn't want to train. But Dennis wouldn't have gone that route. He would have protected him and let him learn his craft. So who's advising Dave Allen on this? Who? Because when he puts his head down on that pillar at night, all he thinks about now is 250 grand. That's five houses where we live. 500 pound a week coming in there. And you still own the houses with no mortgage. So, not exactly a good move, but then again, Dave's a bit quirky, isn't he? So, no more. It will unfold in the coming months, but... Like I said, Dave Allen's got no loyalty to Matchroom. He does not have a contract with Matchroom. So, that's his own fault, isn't it? But, if the Debar's fight's there for 250, I know for a fact Dave will take it for 150 now, surely. After fighting for jump change in Sheffield. Right, the Joshua situation, number six. And lies and that squad, all that palaver and drowning out people in interviews and stuff like that. It just became boring. I couldn't run fucking way. Oh, it's this one, isn't it? Barbershop. It became boring. Very, 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 very boring. That's what it became. Boring. In fact, I'm going to pull up here because this is too dangerous. I'm trying to do all this driving. Down here, there's a lee by down here. I'll get this video done. I'm right, gonna stick my ugly mug on camera. Right. Right, here we go. The Joshua situation and lies. I've got 
Don't focus, man. The Joshua situation and lies and manipulation is unreal. So is the Dillian White and Callum Smith situations with WBC step aside rumours and both not having proper fights. And I mean refusing fights. I mean, we all know what, they, what fights they refuse and what not, don't we? Smith has turned down a handful of fights and so has White. People like IFL kiss asses, kiss ass Umar, going on about White being a guy who talk, who takes hard fights. Did you see that interview with Umar and IFL Umar? He's saying, he's saying, He's saying white. Uh, he's risking it with yet another fight. Povetkin's 41 in September. Gillian White's 32 in April. Nine year between them. Uh, Omar going on about white being a guy who takes hard fights. But Brown and Vac and Povetkin are all over 40 year old. Lucas Brown, Marius Vac, but Alexander Povetkin are all in the 40s. Am I right? They're in their forties. I rest my case, but I do not want to hear anything else about how the system has cheated Dillian White. I thought that one one of my good points. That what do you think about that? Okay. Raining. Number seven. You know when Eddie Hearn does these interviews and he says, I'm still grafting, I'm still grinding, look, this does not work. I do all the lots of running about for Dennis in the day and that. It's not work, is it? Works when you're working at cabbage fields at Lindau Prison in winter, in rain, in snow, sleet. That's work. Or digging holes or working on building sites or working in a factory. That's work. This is not work. Running around all day with your camera in front of you, walking about thinking you're a star. That's not work, is it? This is not work, what I'm doing now. It's not work. So don't... I'm grafting. You've never had a day's graft in your life, Eddie. You've had everything done for you. You've never had a crisis in your life. Let's see how you cope when you've had a crisis. Number eight, Carl Froch versus Chevez. Right. Carl Froch against Chevez. Carl Froch against Chevez. Bob Aram wanted a million dollars to release Chevez. Facts. He had a fight left on his contract. Eddie Hearn said oh, it's not coming out my purse. Carl said oh, it's not coming out my end. Chevez didn't want it to come out his end. So the fight never happened. They spun, Carl, Carl were already eight, eight weeks into camp. They spun a story about an um, elbow injury, but he'd been getting cortisone injections for that, hadn't he? So or some kind of medication for it, so at the end of the day the Eddie Hearn weren't happy were we getting a million quid from the fight because Eddie Hearn were getting a million quid out of the fight he were getting two million, Froch were getting ten, right, or is it dollars? yeah dollars, ten, Froch is getting ten million dollars Eddie Hearn's on twenty percent so Eddie you're gonna have to lose a million out of your end, didn't want to do it so Froch were cheated out in his pension fight, wasn't he? Cheated out of it. That man's only got three pay-per-views. I know he's happy now, that, and he's moved on. He's got that much money, he doesn't know what to do with it, Carl. But uh, I just think that it's in bad taste, that. It would in bad taste. Any promoter worth his salt would have said, well, I can have a million out of that fight, but and I've got to give a million to them, and that leaves me with a million. Or I can have zero of nothing. So he, ne he never made the fight, did he? So... Left a bad taste in my mouth. Number nine. Number nine out of the dirty dozen. Uh, Stub up. Secondary market ticket. Secondary ticket market. We know about Stub up, don't we? What do we all think to Stub up? Well, as far as I'm concerned, Stub up is, is a load of old nonsense. It's just, it's just for them to squeeze every little penny out at show for themselves. This is why they're trying to put, say that their shows are not cancelled now. Trust me, their shows are cancelled. But what is he going and doing around at the moment? 
I could get in trouble for saying this, but I'm not bothered. They've put a proposal to use your call for the free pay-per-view fights. We're only the teams of the fighters there at your call. That's a true story, that. That's a true story. <laughs> So everybody can still watch it on home at pay-per-view. They're not going to be having to pay half a million quid to Hyatt Venue, are they for Tottenham or O2? Just pay 3000 to your call. So they've saved 497 there. Do you see where I'm coming from? The mind of an accountant. Accountant by name, accountant by nature. Number 10, pay-per-views. We've had 36 pay-per-views in the Eddie Dern era. Once the, uh, in fact, might even be more with these next three coming up. It's gone from 15 quid to 25 quid. We've now got three pay-per-views in the space of 49 days. It's a complete mess considering we have the following. Usek against Chisora. Right, Usek against Chisora. That better. Usek against Chisora. Ukraine against Zimbabwe. Am I, am I right? Am I right on that? Usek's had one fighters in every way, he looks shocking. Chisora's got nine losses. He's been finished a few years now. They've been patched it's been patched up, hasn't it? They've got David A out there to promote him and would you take this fight with Chisora if you were Usek's manager, David? No, Derek's a beast. What sort of a question is that? You know what answer's gonna be. It's just bull on top of bull. Like the David A Bellew fights. Bull on top of bull. Uh Chizora's never won at top elite level, has he? Uh, November 17, Tyson Fury, Adam Smith and Eddie Hearn were all in Monaco, weren't they? And what did they say? They said the Cab they said Cap uh, made Chizora look an old man. Three years later, 2020, he's still recycled. If Chizora gets beat against Usek, he's still got one more fight. He's got the Dylan White fight as his payoff. <laughs> it's unbelievable, isn't it? You know what they call it? Recycled shit. It's recycled shit. Tyson Fury avoided by everyone with two fights since he bashed up Delboy. Caballel's since he finished. Delboy's been finished since Caballel. Who's one of the most avoided fighters? Caballel's avoided, not Dillian White. It was avoided by everyone. You don't hear Dillian White mentioning Caballel. He's had two fights since he beat up Chisora Caballel. Derek's had six fights since then. Caballel's 27 year old, 19 and 0. He's avoided Caballel, let me tell you. Ask Peter Fury how good Caballel is. He's sparred Tyson and Yui. But that's boxing for you. Then we move on to the White Povetkin, which is Jamaica versus Russia. Or a 32 year old when they steps in the ring against a 33 year old in, in sorry, against a 41 year old this year, Povetkin. There's no world title online. Dillian's not even fought for a European yet. Don't even mention PEDs to me. These two have failed five tests. Facts, as UCTV Boxing says. Facts, five tests between these two. All five were challenged with a reason. Well, how many boxers can you name that have said I'm guilty of failing a dope test? I don't think there's any. Is there the one that there's a girl, isn't there? Uh, Misha John, is it? Don't quote me on that. I think she's the only one that's admitted it. And Dylan, not not Dylan, uh, the fat guy who should have fought Joshua, Jarrell Miller, Jarrell Miller, and I think Misha. Uh, and me should St. John, is it me or St. John? They're the only ones that have admitted it. So, with a reason why it happened though. White constantly bitching and moaning, ranting and raving, screaming and shouting about being a victim. A victim? Jesus. But everybody needs to have a mouthpiece, don't they? Every fighter, they've got somebody pushing it. She's always got Davey Day, Dylan's got his brother, hasn't he? Or is he his brother? I don't know, Wesley Snipes. The man who, who, who stopped somebody getting out in an aeroplane at 35,000 